Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel Hi Mathematics and today we have a really interesting, I would say like a relaxing school question x plus y equal to 2 and x y equal to 4. But let's solve it, let's solve this with the basic method. First of all, let's express from the first equation, let's express our x. So our x will be equal to 2 minus y. So let's write the thing right here. So our x equal to 2 minus y. This is our main equation. We really need this equation. So x equal to 2 minus y. And right now let's plug in this x right here in the second equation. Okay, so let's do this right now. So we have right here 2 minus y and we still have this y. So times y equal to equal to 4. Really great. Right now let's multiply our parentheses by this y. So as a result we have 2y minus y square. Okay, so we have right here 2y minus y square equal to 4. And it looks like a quadratic equation, but we need to change an order a little bit. So first of all, we need to bring this y minus y square on the first position. So we have right here minus y square on the first position, second position plus 2y. And the third coefficient, we have 4, so we need to bring it from right to left. So we have minus 4 equal to 0. But we don't like this minus right here, so we prefer uh, this, uh, this coefficient with the plus sign. So let's multiply it both sides by by minus 1. When we multiply both sides by minus 1, as a result we have y square minus 2y and plus 4 equal to 0. This is basic quadratic equation, so nothing hard. But right now let's start, for example, uh, finding a discriminant. Let's let's look at it, what will happen when we find a discriminant to this question. So we have right here our discriminant equal to b square minus 4ac. Yeah? We have our discriminant formula. Right now let's plug in each of these coefficients into this, into this spot right here. So we have right here minus 2, we have b square minus 2 square minus 4 times 1 and times c we have we have 4. As a result of a discriminant right here we have 4 minus 16. Yeah, we have right here 4 minus 16, which is equal to minus 12. So it means that right here we have complex roots. But let's find it. Let's see what will happen. First of all, let's write a basic, basic formula. We have y first and second equal to minus b plus minus square root of discriminant and all over all over to a. So let's plug in each of these elements into this into this spot. Let's do this right now. So we have right here y first and y second equal to minus b. We have minus minus 2. So let's write the thing right here. We have 2 plus minus square root of discriminant equal to equal to minus 12. So we have square root of minus 12 and all over we divide all of the thing by by 2. We divide all of the thing by by 2. Right now let's simplify this a little bit. This square root of minus 12 can be written as, uh, just look at it, so we have right here 2 plus minus uh, square root of minus 12. We can write as square root of 4 times square root of 3 and times square root of, of minus 1. And square root of minus 1, this is our imaginary unit, so right here we will have our i. We can easily find this square root of 4, so let's see what will happen. We divide all of the thing by by 2. So y first and y second equal to 2 plus minus 2 square root of 3 times i, 2 square root of 3 times i, and we divide all of the thing by by 2. Right now we can divide our numerator by 2, by parts. So this 2 by 2 and this 2 by 2, because this is our common, common denominator, okay? So as a result, what do we have right here? We have 1 plus minus square root i square root of 3, 1 plus minus i square root of of 3. And these are our complex roots right here, y first and y second. But in the beginning we had our, our looks like a equation, x equal to 2 minus y, because we need to find our pairs of solution, y and x. First of all, let's write our x equal to x equal to 2 minus y. Yeah, this is our equation that we really need right now. And we're going to find both roots, 1 plus i square root of 3. This is our y first, okay? So y first equal to 1 plus i square root of 3 and our y second equal to equal to 1 minus i square root of 3. Right now let's plug in this uh, y first and y second into these spots. So as a result we will have x first and x x second. Let's do this right now. So we have right here x first equal to 2 minus this y, okay, so we have right here 1 plus i square root of 3. Right now let's open parentheses real quick, so we have right here x first equal to 2 minus 1 and minus i square root of 3. As a result, our x first equal to 2 minus 1 equal to 1 right here, minus i square root of 3. 
Yeah, really great. And right now, let's use the same logic. Let's find our x second. Let's do this right now. So we have right here x second equal to the same thing, 2 minus this y. So we have right here 2 minus 1 minus i square root of 3. Really great. So x second equal to 2 minus 1 plus i square root of 3. Right now, 2 minus 1 is the same thing right here. We have 1. So we have right here x second equal to 1 plus i square root of 3. And as you can see, it looks like the same, but with the, the, the opposite sign, plus and minus. So right now, let's write our final answer and let's check our solutions. Let's do the thing right now. So our x and y, x and y equal to, we have two pairs of solution equal to first pair x first 1 minus i square root of 3 1 minus i square root of 3 and 1 plus i square root of 3 and the second pair of solution we have right here just opposite we have 1 plus i square root of 3 and 1 minus i square root of 3. Really great, but let's check it. Let's check this root right here real quick. Let's see what will happen because in the beginning, what we have in the beginning? In the beginning, we have, we have this equation, x plus y equal to 2 and xy equal to 4. Let's rewrite this equation right here real quick and let's check, let's check it. So we have right here x plus y equal to 2 and xy equal to equal to 4. Let's check it, let's, let's prove our Let's prove our, our answer. We can easily take one of these. We don't need to check both of these because this looks like the same thing, just with the opposite sign. We have right here addition and multiplication and doesn't matter. We, we will have like the same thing because um, this is like opposite signs. Addition and multiplication. This operation is really great to check one of these, not both, just one of these. Let's check, for example, right here. Let's check. Looks like that. Let's check the first one. Doesn't matter. So right here we have addition x plus y. Let's do this. So x plus y equal to 2. So x plus y equal to 2. Let's check this one. So we have right here 1 minus i square root of 3 plus 1 plus i square root of 3 equal to 2. Let's look at it. So minus i square root of 3 and plus i square root of 3. We can easily, we can easily cancel right here. So as a result we have 1 plus 1 which is equal to, which is equal to 2. So the first equation is really great. So really, really great right now. Right now, let's check uh, our second. We have right here xy equal to 4. Let's do this. So xy equal to 4. Let's check this product. Let's see what will happen right here. So let's use the same thing. Let's check this pair. Okay, let's do this. So we have right here 1 minus i square root of 3 times 1 plus i square root of 3 equal to equal to 4. Okay, let's do the thing right now. And right here, we don't need to multiply one by each other because this is our identity. This is our a square minus b square. From school, you need to know that we have right here our formula. a square minus b square equal to a minus b times a plus b. And this is exactly our case. Difference and the sum right here. So as a result, we have a square minus b square. 1 square minus this one i square root of 3 square which is equal to 4 okay and the final step right here 1 minus i square and square root of 3 to the second power equal to equal to 3 and we need to know that i square equal to minus 1 so as a result right here we will have like a plus sign and 1 plus 3 equal to equal to 4 which is absolutely absolutely correct thing so as you can see we completely solved this challenge this is not that hard challenge i i agree with it because this looks like a basic school question but with these complex complex numbers it turns into a big argument a lot of students confused about this about this part they say that okay right here we have a negative discriminant so we can can't find our roots right here but as you can see with the complex unit with this i we can easily find these complex pairs of com complex pairs of solutions so this is our this is our final answer right here because i don't have enough space to rewrite it in the end this is our answer this is our complex right here this is our complex solution and this is our complex complex solution and this is my explanation to this challenge. It looks like it, not that hard, I, I agree, because a lot of students confused about this solution. But as for me, this is a great practice question for, for beginners, for, for, for students who, who like math. Yeah, this is not a complicated question because we have only one only one substitution and we go with it through all of this all of this solution. So it's not that hard. 
Uh, and uh, I hope you understand my explanation. I hope you learn something new. You can easily write your suggestion down into the comment section, write your notes, maybe you have a faster method. But I guess this looks like a basic and common solution for, for most of students because basic substitution and basic quadratic equation. But if you have your own solution, write your solution down into the comment section. It will be really interesting to read about it. It will be really interesting to exchange information because a lot of a lot of solutions it's much better when, when we solve this challenge in, in one solution. It's much better when you write your solution, write your approach down into the comment section and we exchange information. This is a great thing when we exchange information and we try to learn something new. So I write your solution down into the comment section. I write your approach down into the comment section. Thank you everyone for watching my video. Thank you everyone for your support. I really appreciate it. It's really important for me. It inspires me to make new content every day. So thank you for your time. Have a great day. See you in the next videos.